jasonnewland.com the website of everything that I do that's a broad statement but it's the place to go uh, this is let me bore you to sleep my name's Jason Newland I might have said that already please only listen when you can safely close your eyes And Andre's now awake, which is weird. <laughs> Just I don't know. I don't know why. It just seems to. I don't know if it's me, my voice, but he suddenly he just comes to life sometimes when I start recording. So, ah, uh, well, don't matter. This is his home. He can do what he wants. The only way to avoid this would be to sit in my shed and to close this door and to close the bedroom door, to close the shed door, to close all the windows in the bedroom and sit in the shed. That will avoid him but I haven't got soundproofing in the shed yet so it's uh, well that would be probably quieter it would mean that I'd just be staring at a, a wooden wall you know wooden walls it's it's uh because when I do these recordings I don't have my eyes closed when I do the sleep recordings, like sleep hypnosis, stuff like that, I have my eyes closed generally, so it don't matter where I am. So I can sit in a, a little shed and hopefully, you know, and it'll be quiet and it's good. But when I'm making these recordings, I've got a bit more activity probably occurring inside my shell like shell like my brain my head me egg me old egg and uh, yeah so a few things I'm gonna mention today is first of all I suppose the website is something to mention I just want to say I hope you're all okay hope everyone's fine and <sighs> as some of you may know that my website went down for a few days and now I've got it's up and running again it's a different design but it's still my website and jasonnewland.com it's actually now on Google you know it comes up on Google before it didn't because I had it with GoDaddy and they wanted £120 or whatever in order to buy an SSLC uh, certificate for the domain or blah blah blah, blah. but uh I'm using Shopify and it's all built in so as soon as I basically well it's not the first on the list of my name it's the third I think Facebook and possibly Twitter are, are above it but at least it's there now you know so if you put if you if you, if you forget my website if you just put my name in to Google and my website will come up and I've been working on it a bit but as per usual I get a little get a little bit caught up in it all and but it's okay the the main thing is 
I I had a few people lately on Facebook contact me telling me that the the Spotify some of the Spotify podcasts are not working and I think I mentioned this the other day and uh, part of the reason would be because Spotify download all of the recordings of a podcast and then some podcasts I've deleted and then restarted them all with another podcast host uh, so what I've done is on my website I've got a page I think it's called my podcasts if you click on there it lists all the different podcast hosts that maybe you like to use so if you use Stitcher if you like if you use Spotify Apple Podcasts CastBox uh, you name it you know it's whatever there's quite a few there and I spent the last few hours doing that I've only put the top six website the top six podcasts on there they're the most popular I will include the others as well at a later stage but I thought I'd just put the popular ones on first but it's all done it's basically I don't know how many different podcast hosts there are so through and I've also I've also I've also in the menu on the page I've also got Spotify in the menu so the navigation menu so you can click on Spotify you can click on Spreaker and again that brings up those pages like a shortcut you know because some people only listen on Spotify which is fair enough because I didn't realise ah I didn't um, a friend on Facebook told me yesterday that she she was having problems with the, with the Spotify it wasn't working it turned out it was her phone however what she told me is I didn't realise that uh, Spotify has a way the app where you can have it turn itself off after a certain amount of time which is really good isn't it so I've I've used Spotify but I've only listened like to music um, and at the moment I've been using Amazon Music Unlimited because for I quite I think you can get the same thing with Spotify really I think they're very similar kind of well, Spotify was first wasn't it Andre I'm going to see if Andre wants to give me a little cuddle it's really weird he runs away from me like I'm going to do something to him you know all I've ever done is be nice to him yeah <laughs> I go to pick him up sometimes and he runs like I'm about to like you know tie him up and feed him to a tiger or something why would I do that I don't know any tigers what are you looking at it's really weird when I look at his eyes his face reminds me a little bit of my landlady's face when I first in back in 1991 she had the same kind of eyes as him and that's not an insult to her because he's got beautiful eyes so it's definitely not an insult I suppose <laughs> I suppose <laughs> if he said oh my darling I just love your eyes what do you like about my eyes what do you love about my eyes look like a ferret <laughs> you, you have ferret size isn't it weird even after four years and three months this little boy is still the love of my life and you
bloody annoying. I love you so much. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. He's looking at me like, what are you making those stupid sounds for? I'm not sure if he's more... I think it's the facial expressions as well. Plus he's yawning. He gets bored, honestly. I think that's when I realised. I think if you can bore a ferret, something that's like, especially when he's a baby, because they're hyper, hyperactive. If you can talk to a, a hyperactive ferret and have it yawn and get bored, then you can bore anyone. That's why. I, that's how I discovered my... For years... <laughs> For years and years and years, since 2006, I've been making audios and videos online. I actually thought that people were falling asleep because of my great hypnotic talent when it might just be because I'm boring. And... kind of doesn't matter what I talk about which is yeah I don't know it's it's funny but it's not at the same time but you know what I I do believe and I know it's it's, it's not my own own words something other people have said but I really do believe that Everybody has a superpower. You know, everybody has an ability, like uh, something that they can do, a talent. And, you know, I've always known I'm never going to be the strongest person. I'm not physically, I'm physically okay, I'm average average strength you know but I'm you know I'm never gonna I was never gonna be the fastest runner although I used to be a fast runner when I was a kid but not that was just when people were chasing me but in competitive stuff I just couldn't I couldn't be bothered so okay so we're at school and someone's running there's like six of us running so for me to get to that line before you what do I win? Nothing. Is what? What's the point then? If I get to that line before everyone else, will I suddenly be two inches taller? No. Well, I don't want it then. Oh man, I tell you, oh, I've got so much, I've got so much to tell, oh, so much to, to tell you. Um, you know they say that. Some celeb, I'm not comparing myself to celebrity status, obviously. But some celebrities say, "Oh, don't, um, don't Google yourself because you're just going to see stuff you don't want to see." Well, I was googling my podcasts in order to put it all together on the website. So I needed to go into each podcast on Spotify, TuneIn, um, Podchaser, blah, blah, loads of pod yeah lots of different podcasts and I got to see some comments that people had posted that I hadn't seen before some of which were a bit distressing if I'm honest um, I think Castbox was the biggest one it is possible I could have been trolled but it didn't because it was sort of similar stuff, but um, a lot, well, too many, I suppose I'm exaggerating by saying a lot, but too many for my liking. Uh, comments complaining about the, the adverts on the podcast. And some people were saying, oh, I fell asleep and suddenly there's, a, there's an advert. Well... The adverts were only at the beginning of the podcast. They weren't in the middle. They weren't in the end. Unless there was a, a fault with the with the podcast. I don't know. But 
Anyway, and numerous complaints on these comments. Uh, I'm thinking, some people were saying, oh, I really like it if it wasn't for the adverts. Some people posted stuff like that. And it seems that people are more likely to complain than to say something nice, which is a shame. So what I did is I took that on board and I deleted all the adverts, cancelled them all, took them off, uh, so that Spreaker will no longer play adverts on any of my podcasts, including Spotify and anywhere. There will be no adverts from now on. Um, which is a shame because I was trying to raise enough money to cover the costs of the free service which it wasn't but I was hoping to eventually get to that point but I'm not sure what I'm going to do now because this what is it 100 and I think I'm paying $77 for the podcast Spreaker for to house all my podcasts 30 dollars for Shopify another 30 pound for the internet you could technically the internet I need it but would I not have it if I did, wasn't doing this the answer is probably no to be fair but I wouldn't have to have the expensive internet I could get it a lot cheaper if I was just using it just for watching telly and stuff So it's, it's, what's that, 78, no. it's 100 and, let's say just the podcast and the, the uh, Shopify, so it's over about $110 or whatever a month, so it's, I'm just going to keep doing it and I'm, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get that and let that get in the way, I'm just going to need to be a little bit careful over the next year but you know I'm I'm on here to help I don't want to I don't want to annoy people by having adverts and stuff and I know that it is a different uh, volume compared to because I'm so softly spoken even in these recordings it's still it's not just like normal talking it's very it's on the verge of whispering really it's quite very softly gentle kind of talking and so that's what I did I, oh one of the comments that people left someone left they, it was on a, a whisper deep sleep whisper hypnosis podcast it might have been on Castbox as well. I think people in Castbox perhaps don't like me, which is a shame because I love them. But I also, I also did find some nice comments as well that I hadn't seen, so that was nice. But there's not many comments at all. So if you do like what I do, well, if you don't, why are you listening? But you know, so if you do, um and you're listening on your favourite podcast host whatever it is, is Spotify or whatever it is maybe I don't know if you're able to, to maybe leave a comment say hi um, that'd be groovy and what else yeah someone posted on the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis they posted <laughs> something about will you will you stop oh, let me see if I can get the right words will you stop talking about how buff you are <laughs> first of all with a deep sleep whisper I don't do much chatting it is more focusing on the relaxation and sleepy stuff I might tell the odd little silly to say the odd silly thing 
but any time, and I've, if I talk about being more muscular and having a six pack and being really strong and tough and being seven foot tall with blonde hair, I'm just joking about. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I mean, go on to my videos, you can see what I look like. You know, I'm a middle aged man, usually got a beard. To be fair, my body's all right. It's just a bit of a belly, but you know, generally I'm okay. Ish, I could do with losing some weight, but or distributing it. If I could, if I could move it from my belly to my willy, I'd be happy. Anyway, so I could. Um, I'm just messing about when I say stuff like, you know, I'm, um, you know, oh, an amazing body. I mean, I, I thought that was kind of clear. <laughs> it just, it was just, it's weird. I don't know. Some people take things seriously. And well, I suppose some of them, some of those recordings are kind of serious, but even the stuff when the topic is kind of serious I still don't want to be taken seriously you know just I'm trying I want it to be light hearted and gentle and you know humorous and whatever I don't I'm not if that makes sense do it make sense which I know is, that's why a lot of people listen to this because it is just gentle and it's just mucking around but it's, at the same time it's boring it's just me chatting there's repetition there's I'm talking about stuff that's of no interest most of the time not even to me but you know and boring doesn't necessarily have to be um, a negative thing you know I think boring is a good thing being bored is why would you want to be anything but bored when you're going to sleep you know isn't that kind of the point and I know that some of you listening to this are listening to just allow yourself and your mind to wind down and, and you're just listening to me and it's kind of we're part of a kind of part of a group the the hundreds of people I don't know how many people two two four six oh that's hard to work out it's probably at least six hundred plus people a day at the moment listen to these recordings uh, you know around that maybe maybe sometime, maybe more I don't know about 600 over the various different podcasts maybe more but it's you know it's growing and so, you know you're part of a part of something or we're part of something and even if it is just tedium, <laughs> just pointless chatter, it's, if it's useful, it's useful. And that's why I'm doing it. When it's, st you know, if I get to the point and I'm getting no listens, then I'll stop doing it. You know, I'm not going to. Um, there's podcasts I've got that are really good that no one listens to so I stop doing them I say that are really good well the reason I say that is because I like them and I thought that the content was quite it was really good quality lots of ideas and stuff and Hypnotic Buffet is the one and, and I mention it I've mentioned it before but no one listens to it so it's on there, it's available, it's online, it's on Spreaker, it's you know everywhere, but I 
I'm not going to make recordings that no one's going to listen to because that is just it's pointless. It's pointless for everyone. So that's how I gauge whether or not to continue with something. That's why I do these. That's why I do the deep sleep whisper ones. They're more popular than this this podcast. The relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety, panic attacks. Again, a, a popular podcast. And Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, another one that's fairly popular. Um, so there, I've got six popular podcasts. Three or over 100,000 downloads each. Someone's going to post a comment on it. Why don't you keep coming on about your stats? Why don't you keep showing off? Keep showing off. Keep talking about the hundred thousand podcasts. Well, because to me it's kind of an accomplishment. To me, like a personal accomplishment. Because I have reached, you know, hundreds of thousands before. I've had well over a million plus downloads with previous podcasts you know, combined. But never with, you know, in the last, since the 21st of November last year, 2018, and it's now the 7th of December, I've had, what have I had? I don't know. That's weird, isn't it? I think I've had 680,000 downloads. I feel like I want to check that now. I wonder if I have. I'm going to make a little bit of noise there, so please bear with me. I don't, I'm not like going to be making farm animal noises, nothing like that, just a general... general creaking noise as I move my laptop around to just get an idea let's have a look oh no I did exaggerate I love to exaggerate what did I say 680 no it's 590,448 downloads 21,214 total plays and today so far it's 5.40 in the morning but 355 downloads yesterday I had 1,605 day before that 1,712 downloads day before oh it's just going down and down by two days in a row, where I had over 2,000. Two, that's all right. It kind of depends on how many I produce. Um, if I make, if I only make one recording, then I'm usually like just below the 2,000 download mark. Let me bore you. Oh, let me pull your pain away. I wonder if it looks like I've got a few. Oh, one download. Six downloads on the 27th. See, I'd make more of those, but I did one on the 14th of November. 17 downloads. And the one before that was the 21st of November. 85 downloads is there's no point is there I'm not going to what's the point in making spending time doing that this is so far on this podcast so let me bore you to sleep you won't get this information anywhere else this is this is just priceless information and this is your contribution you know is 79,501 total downloads 
with 5,512 total plays. 269 episodes, well, this will be 270. Yesterday I had 233 downloads and 20 plays. So yeah, and I can have a look. I'll give you an idea. Mind you, I might regret it because I might think, oh no, 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 November, November, oh no, uh, 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 uh. okay, let's have a look. So it goes through periods, goes through periods. So last month, November, I had, was well, so far this month, I've got 1,352 downloads. But it's, that's just for six days. So last month, November, 5,405 downloads and 257 plays. October 5,309 downloads, 256 plays. September 6,235 downloads, 258. July was a lot busier, 8,282 downloads, 129 plays. Now, that is just... That is just on this podcast alone. There's two other pod. There's three other podcasts actually, where this podcast is housed as well, which is the um, Sleep Insomnia Hypnosis Podcast, the Fall Asleep with Hypnosis Podcast, I think, and the Jason Newland's Free Hypnosis Podcast. So it's on four different podcasts. There's this one, the main one, and then it's on the others. So it's, yeah, probably about 600 plus downloads a day, which is how many, how much is that a week? Six, uh, a month rather. 600, I go by 30 days, but I know a week is 28, a month is 28 days, isn't it really? But if we if go by 30 days just for the hell of it, 30, 600 times by 10 is 6,000 times that by 12, no, times by six, 600 times by 10 is 6,000 times that by 2 is 12,000 plus 6, 18,000. So, probably, yeah, probably looking 18 to 20,000 downloads a month for this, these Let Me Boil You Sleep recordings, which ain't too bad, is it? I think it's all right. It's all right. Oh, let's have a drink there. So, with nothing else, it wasted five minutes, so that was good. Um, oh, oh. What was I going to say? Yeah, so, I changed the website to so make it easier for people to find stuff. Um, which is kind of part of the website's job, really, isn't it? I don't have every single recording on there at the moment. Um, but I've got the the main podcasts on there. The ones that are popular. So they're, they're on there. And you can, you can listen, you can actually stream it or you can download it for free. So, you know, it's, it's up to you. It's it's there anyway. So it's, and you can contact me if you need to. If you want to sell on, send Andrea a present. 
and the address is on the contact. Or if you wanted to send me a Christmas present or Christmas card or something like that, I do have a Christmas card already, which is brilliant. So Polly sent me that, so that was, that was cool. So that's that's already standing up on. Oh, I had to look right behind me because it's on top of the bookshelf. So that's. I like Christmas cards and presents. It's nice. The thing is, is, as I get older, and it's probably the same for everybody, maybe, but no one seems to want to buy cards or presents anymore for me <laughs> for me it's even sort of my brother said oh would you are you going to get about getting my niece a present for Christmas if I wasn't going to it's fine but if I was then they'd get me a present from her so basically not getting a present from them but then it's expensive isn't it having kids it's just having a daughter or son or whatever suddenly all Christmas is and birthdays and stuff like that I don't know if people celebrate Easter anymore I don't know but uh Yeah, I've kind of cancelled Christmas now. In it from a um, buying presents perspective, Perspe pers perspective, per perspective, and because it's just, I feel I'd rather spend the money on bills. Just you know, pay bills and pay stuff off. And have some food and stuff. That that seems to be a, a better a better use of my money. So when I'm rich, I buy everyone lots of stuff. But not until well, not rich. But when I've got you know maybe next year or something, I'll be I'll have a more money or something. I don't know. I don't know. But Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. So this month, you've got the 12th of December, which is the election. And then, um, after the election, what, 12, 20, 22, 23, 24, 20, 13 days, 2012, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 13, so it's over, over three days, and it'll be Christmas. And it's like, ooh, and then, a week and it's New Year's Eve or New Year's Day something like that it's like ooh and then it's 2020 and people will be going 2020 no 2020 don't you mean 2020 no 2020 2020 no no 2020 I will not back down from that all part of being uh, middle-aged I think I know you know some people say oh I feel the same I did when I was 16 I don't I don't feel the same at all not one bit I physically don't feel the same and I don't mentally feel the same I had zero confidence in myself, zero confidence in my own thoughts or my own opinions or my own, you know, ability to um, just, to, when I was little, when I was young, even 
early 20s, I used to find that people older seem to be attracted to me, like friends-wise. And I don't want to talk down to me, you know? Almost as if I didn't know anything. And I suppose in their own way, perhaps they were trying to help, you know, guide me and stuff, because I, I definitely did need some guidance. But for a long time, I didn't feel that I actually, that my that my words meant anything until I realised that my words mean as much as anybody else's and so do all of ours there's something about older people when I was younger this is I found older people and by older I mean like maybe 10 years older than me people in their 30s and 40s when I was like in my 20s and 30s, I was trying to sort of, I don't know, almost disregard what I was saying. And I wonder if I do that. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Yeah. I do find younger people funny, but, and I don't have much contact with the the younger generation these days. I used to when I was working, so I'd, I'd be working in a call centre and I'd be working with people of all ages, people older, mostly younger, because I was in call centres and just the younger younger people do that job generally because it's it's kind of a very short lived job it's something that you it's great I reckon working in a call centre like as a in telesales especially if you get a bonus which I always did um, I've never worked f- without a bonus uh, you have, well, I'm not saying I'm not going on about how great I was <laughs> how buff I was I just uh, a lot of sales jobs generally have a bonus with it part of the package you know do you have to meet a certain degree of uh, sales so I imagine for some of the people who work there there were maybe late teens, early 20s, still living at home with their parents and they were earning, you know, to them probably really good money. But to me, it wasn't because when I I worked at my last job, I did, what was I doing? I was working, so it was back in selling car insurance. On the phone, answering the phone, and you know, just going through that process, giving quotations and selling it. And the bonus was small, you know, it, was, it wasn't a great bonus. There was, I think the basic was 13,000 which wouldn't be allowed now because there's a minimum wage so the minimum wage would be about 15,000 um, but at the time it was 13,000 minute that was a salary and plus a bonus and the way they worked the bonus out I was never going to double my money which I always did with the other sales jobs so I was never going to earn 26000 a year. I just... It was multiple things. First, I, I, don't think I was pretty... I, I couldn't sell enough to do that. And the bonus wasn't good enough. And they just... It wasn't, you know, it wasn't very well structured. 
Um, so I ended up sometimes like take 400 maybe 500 a month bonus so it was an extra five or six grand a year I suppose but that's still maybe it was 20 20 you know 20,000 a year 19 20 with the bonus but still I had a lot off of the 26 that I should have got so my supervisor who's a really really nice person but he was very kind of trying to motivate everyone and I I felt I couldn't get excited over a bonus that was less you know this is back in 2000 and what year was this I started in December 2012 so let's say 2013 so 2013 I was earning less doing exactly the same job as I was in 2001 so it's kind of I try to put that across you know I know you're getting excited about bonuses and stuff but it's not a lot I mean it's give me a thousand pound bonus and I might I might do a little tap dance for you on the desk but or eat a banana all in one go so you know do something to to make you smile but I just and it was like oh you know which is ironic because now earning 19,000 a year I feel like a millionaire isn't that ironic? Don't you think? It's like, ooh, ooh, when it's been to survive, when it's been to lose, it's to survive, it's been to be, and that was, uh, what's her name? Was she Canadian, wasn't she? Um, not Cindy Lauper. Uh, not Marilyn Monroe um, oh, Mary not Mary Poppins what was her name Alice Alizani Mariette yeah Alizani uh, Mariette I used to like that I like that album it was, uh, yeah, I think she was, yeah, <laughs> had some issues when she was making that. Didn't tell you about the chair, did I? Here we go. So I got this chair, and it's broken. Got it delivered. Waited for, well, seemed like ages. It wasn't really. Um, It'd be a long time if you had a splinter in your bum and you're waiting for it to get removed in the hospital you know because it was a long time but other than that it's it was I got it delivered anyway it came and I took all the plastic stuff off and all the, the wrapping it didn't come in a box like the other one the big black squeaky chair that I'm actually resting my feet on right now it's proper worn out it really is anyway it looked fine I even sat in it and it's, it felt fine smaller than the one I got um, but you know I reclined it and it seemed fine so I got rid of I, came, I got up 
got rid of the packaging, ripped it all up and everything. And I sat down in again, again in it and I realised that the back of the chair was just basically flat. It wasn't coming back. And I thought, oh, maybe it needs to be tightened or something, I don't know. So I couldn't figure out what was going on because it looked absolutely fine. But when I tipped it over and I hit it with a hammer a few times, I realised it was broke. And uh, I didn't hit it with a hammer. But I turned it over and the, the wood where the hinges, which was connected to the back of it, was split on both sides, completely broken on one and split on the other. So I phoned up. I tried to get through to them on that day and I couldn't so I phoned them up the next day and the it was a, a kerfuffle because I'd already sent a, um, a message to them via the website and they said that I was going to, you know, I said that I'd lost the packaging because I got rid of it and there was no packaging and I didn't want a replacement because I was unhappy with the service um, and also said that the delivery people were really nice and friendly and just, you know, just basically it's clearly been damaged in the warehouse or something, I don't know. And can you come and get it? And they sent me a, a text message saying um need to arrange a time for you to come and collect it okay and that was it so i phoned them up the catalog the online catalog and i spoke to someone they said you know it's got us we're very busy but we really love you we love you so much but we can't get through right now, but can you please hold, because we love you. We we just want to hug you and kiss you forever and ever and ever, because you buy stuff with us, and you get into debt. It's brilliant, so please, please, because we, we like to live off, like leeches live off your your debt and all the money you owe, so please. That's a leech sucking. And uh, so that's the message. And I said, oh, okay. I'm really, it's, I should do impressions, shouldn't I? I can do a, that's a, that was, that, that was another leech, but his name was Bob. So I got through to this lady and I have to be careful how I say this because it can sound um, wrong. So I'm going to word it in a, a nice way. Well, not nice way. I couldn't understand what she was saying. Now, I have many years of listening to people with all accents on the phone. That's one skill that I do have. I've learned it for many, you know, going back 20 odd years. I've been listening to people on the phone and people from all over the country and you get to kind of tune into the accent, whether it's an English accent, whether it's Scottish, Welsh, whether it's uh, from another country or whether it's someone from this country but with a... Um, you know, a broken English accent, someone that's English isn't their first language, whatever, however you want to describe it. Or also people with speech impediments. You know, I've, I've, I've heard everything possibly you could hear, really, I'd say, over the years. Thousands and thousands of phone calls. And I could usually tune in. Usually. Usually. I could not I 
I was talking to this lady and I have to ask her to repeat herself because she just it was she was practically incomprehensible the way she was talking and I just I just couldn't believe it. I was kind of a little bit... Well, if it's a foreign call centre... Then they need to get people that can speak English... Clearly, because it's a phone call. It's as simple as that. It's got nothing to do with culture or race. It's to do with... You need to be able to speak clearly on the phone. It doesn't matter where you're from. That's what you've got to do. So if you're speaking... To somebody in German, let's say if you're doing a call center for Germany, if I'm doing that, I need to be able to speak German in a way for the German people to understand me. There's no point speaking it and them not being able to understand what I'm saying because it's a telephone conversation. You can't, you know, you haven't got, you haven't got the visual, you haven't got the, you can't do the hand movements or, um, the facial expressions and you can't write something down like draw a little picture for them to see you know that kind of stuff so um, it's very and if it was based in England why would they employ someone on the phone who can't speak English clearly I mean, that's, that's the one job you can't do. You know, you could pretty much do so many different jobs without being able to speak English clearly. But a telephone job where you're speaking on the phone with somebody all day long, you need to be able to speak the language clearly. It's not even the language, you need to be able to speak clearly. And you know, I've worked with people in call centres and I sort of, I used to say sometimes to my supervisors, when this person was in a job interview, did you actually, did you have earbuds in or something? My supervisor said, well, what do you mean? Or did you not hear his voice during the interview while you were talking to him? Yeah. Well, why did you give him a job on the phone? Why You could have given him a job doing something different. Talking on the phone when... I'm not going to do an impression, but some people are just... They're not supposed to work on phones. Just like some people are not supposed to be electricians. They just... You need to be able to speak clearly. Clearly. And oh, I've had people from all over the place, different parts of the country, on call centres that don't speak clearly. It's like, come on, man. You're not in the pub now. You know, you're dealing with people from everywhere. You need to speak clearly. I mean, that's the one thing I was able to do. But that's the one thing everybody should be able to do. I'm just moving my phone there. So I had one job and in a call centre. And the first thing they did, before even interviewing me, is they phoned me up. So I sent the CV in and they said, they spoke to me, I don't know, the... Uh, HR department phoned and said well when are you available because we're going to get one of the team leaders is going to give you a call I said okay and they phoned up because they wanted to hear what I sounded like on the phone if I sounded like that then maybe I wasn't really you know, suitable for for phone calls you know, it's just, it's a certain, you need, 
yeah, just that was it. I suppose also to see if I sounded confident and then and then all that. But just I didn't have to like read out words or like the alphabet. A B C D and ended up saying Z at the end of course, not C because Z is the correct way and <laughs> and then, 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 did you know that uh, Father Christmas? Uh, some people call him Santa, but it's Father Christmas. And is used to be have a green costume. So Santa used to have a green costume, but got changed to red because of Coca Cola. apparently he was drinking coca-cola and he spilt it all over himself and back then coke was red and it stained his top and they thought oh that's nice bit sticky but that's nice and so I'm talking to this lady on the phone and I'm just having to ask her to repeat every thing that she says to me and it's and she, we really weren't communicating very well and then she eventually puts me through to someone else and to deal with the return and I've got no idea if this person was from the same office in the same country I've got no idea where there's no way of knowing but she was brilliant clear and just the, the you know the the communication was fine and it wasn't fine because I didn't get what I wanted but they said they didn't offer that service so I said I wanted to get I want to think out of my flat don't want it in my flat no more. It's in the way. It's a big lump and it's in my way. And the only big lump that gets to stay here is me. I'm the only big lump. That chair is just in the way. And they said, this lady, she said to me, and I said, just to remind you, there's no wrapping on the thing. She said, oh, they won't take it. The delivery people won't take it if it's not wrapped. I said, what? He said, yeah, yeah, they won't take it. I said, well, I've got nothing to wrap it in because I've chucked all the stuff away. And she said, well, can you put carrier bags on it or some sellotape? Or... So I said, oh, I've got some carrier bags and some sellotape. I'll do that. And she said, okay. So I spent about an hour putting sellotaped carrier bags onto this chair, which became a target for Andre. He just wanted to rip the carrier bags off. That was like his new, it's almost like I'd, I'd bought the chair and put the carrier bags on as like a new game for him to play. He's had a few days pleasure out of that. And today I got some, I'll put some bubble wrap, not bubble wrap. She said, oh, if you put some bubble wrap around it, who the hell has bubble wrap? I don't have bubble wrap. Why would I have bubble wrap? What, the size of a big recliner chair? No. And she said, well, it's just an idea. I said, So sometimes you really wind me up. She said, sorry about that. So it's okay, I just, just had to get it off my chest. She said, what's that? I said, well, my bra, of course. She said, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, or a bit restrictive, aren't they? I said, yeah, I know. The worst thing about it is if I take it off too, too quickly, it rips my hairs off my chest. La la la, we laughed. And... 
I basically got some uh, some wrap. What is it? Cling film. I thought about doing it with tin foil, but that didn't seem to be didn't seem right. So I got some cling film, and I've wrapped the back headrest up. I'm gonna get some more cling film next week and wrap some more of it up. And they come to collect it next week. So, ah. Oh. And I got an email saying, How would you rate your experience <laughs> today? And I just ignored that. It's like, ah. Oh. Really? Really? What other one did I deal with and they asked me to rate my experience? I can't remember. Yeah. Who else did I deal with? I must have dealt with someone. So I had the chair delivered. Did I get... What else did I get? I didn't have a delivery of any food this week. I got 72 pence in the bank, so that's that's good. So I'm, I'm up on last week, so I'm doing well. 72 pence. Um... Sure, something happened. No, maybe not. Oh yeah, just all the hospital, not the the doctor stuff. But I talked about that before a couple of days ago. So yeah, basically, I've got this chair, and now I went to take Andre for a walk earlier. Could I find him? No. Everywhere I looked, he wasn't there. Well, clearly otherwise... Well, not everywhere, because I did find him eventually. But for the sake of the story, he wasn't in the places that I was looking. And I thought, where the heck is he? Because now that I've moved chairs around, he started doing stuff different, moving things around. And I found him, he's underneath the chair, the new chair. That's his new place. So you know what? I'm a bit worried because I don't know what he's doing when I'm in bed. He might have ripped a hole in the bottom of it by now. And it's not not really my fault, is it? Because they've left it here for 10 days. I've got a little ferret running around. He's going to do whatever the hell he wants to do. What am I supposed to do? Keep him locked up for 10 days? No. So, uh, anyway, I found him underneath the chair. But somehow, by lifting the chair up, I went to put it down and he started squeaking like, like that. So I picked it all the way up in order to get to him and make sure he's okay. And all the stuff on the chair fell into his bowl. He's got this big bowl full of water. It's a big blue plastic thing. So all this stuff just fell into the water. Electrical equipment, some of it. Ah, I was so... Never been so angry. (laughs) So, yeah. But that's really, that's, that's really it for today. Um, I'm watching the boxing later today. So I'm looking forward to that. It's on early. It's on at five. It starts at five. The main fight's on at nine-ish. And we're going to have... Um, it's in Dubai. So, cause it's, so it's a sort of different kind of time zone to normal. And if it's in the UK, normally the the event starts about seven. 
or if it's in America, it'll start about two in the morning. To the start at five in the afternoon, that's quite cool. I quite like that. It actually is a good time for me because I'm usually I'm usually up by about three. And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It'd be nice. I'm inviting my friend um, to come and watch it with me if he wants. But other than that, I'll just watch it. I don't need. Don't. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Oh, I've got an itchy eye. Ooh, that was nice. But uh, yeah, that's it. I can't think of anything else really. I think I've covered most of the things that was to be covered. Yeah, it's mainly done. Mainly done. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for listening. I will speak to you very soon, probably tomorrow. And please remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. You really do. And I was thinking about this, you know. We can make a difference to other people's lives without even knowing it. the amount of times that we've helped others possibly improve their life helped other people to make a, a decision that maybe transformed their life in a positive way we'll never know about it we'll never find out about it so we do deserve to be happy you deserve to be happy and do something nice for yourself today. That's my suggestion. Do something nice. Something that you enjoy doing. Something that feels really good. Right, I'm going to go. Take care of yourselves. Lots of love. Bye.